Hello, hello, hello! You are tuning into another episode of The Wonder Kid Show. Today's second topic. With Lamar missing so much OTAs, who's going to end up being his favorite target for this upcoming season? Look! This is actually a topic I've actually kind of been mulling on for not even the past two days, for about a week. I was going over some number, numbers from last year, and I was looking at Lamar from 2019 on, and I've been looking at, you know, it being, you know, so much of a tight end-driven offense that he's been accustomed to. Lamar has shined throwing to the middle of the field, right? That is what made Brady great. That's what made Peyton Manning great. Uh, <clears throat> but the outside threat is where we've always, as Raven fans, clamored to have, because for the entire time that we've been in existence, we've only had one amazing or at least top of the line season from the wide receiver position. Once, I think that's the year Desmond Mason had like 1,200 yards, 1,300 yards or something of that effect. Um, and that's it. That's it. That's all there is to it. There's no more to it. Um, so I was wondering, I'm like, bruh, with OTAs, because everyone's talking about OTAs, OTAs, Lamar missing OTAs, Lamar owing money and uh, Lamar not getting money and everything else like that. I was wondering, I was saying, with OTAs being gone, I put out two videos of him training with Zay Flowers. Mark Andrews is back healthy. They're going to have to use Isaiah Likely, so he's going to be a big weapon this year. Bateman is healthy. Who's going to be his favorite target? Now, I look back and I'm saying, you know, Mark would be the easiest answer, right? Mark has been the most consistent and the best weapon throughout Lamar Jackson's uh, illustrious career thus far. But, this is a big but, he's no longer the only weapon for Lamar. And on top of it, he's not the only tight end for Lamar. Because likely is absolutely amazing. And it's actually funny to me how they have yet to use him in tandem with Mark. But they said it's going to be rectified this season. Because they're going to be looking for... Ample amount of chances to use those two guys together. The Aaron, Her Her the Aaron Hernandez and Gronkowski uh, duo, they're trying to recreate it in Baltimore. So we're going to get to see if they do that. But then you have Zay. And Zay would probably be number two for most people's list. Oh, Zay, the joystick, Zonic, you know, Shifty. He's practicing with him now and everything else. You know, oh, that's who we're going to go for. You know what I'm saying? And that's his guy from Miami. He's always around him. It just makes sense that he would be the guy that would garner the most attention or thus targets. And last but not least, the fourth would probably be Bateman. Everybody else, don't count. We know they're not going to do anything. Nelson Aguilar, barring injury, Nelson Aguilar is not going to contribute to that level. And neither is, uh, uh, what's his name, um, that ran back the kickoff. So... Oh, and you got Tej Walker. Uh, 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 what's it called? But here's the thing. Uh, we already know Tez isn't going to be what he needs right now, right? It's just not. He's a rookie. So it's Bateman. Bateman might have the opportunity this year to lead the Baltimore Ravens in receptions and yards. Oh. Let me tell you why. <clears throat> Everybody knows last year, starting out, Zay Flowers was getting force-fed the ball. If you go back to the first, I believe, five games of the season, they were he was trying to force-feed the ball to Zay Flowers, okay? It wasn't working. It was not working. There was multiple plays that we looked at that Bateman was open. And then when he finally had the opportunity to get it, Bateman would just... That's... The connection just wasn't there. So, I'm thinking... Because here's my number. Because right now, that would be your top four. If I had to pick, I know y'all going to crucify me for this. If I had to pick who's going to lead the Ravens in receptions, well, maybe not receptions, but at least yardage, I think it might be Rashad Bateman. And I think it's also going to be because of the coaching. I've said this so many times. The Baltimore Ravens like to be known as the smartest person in the room. I I alluded and covered, right, the contract from Waddle from Miami. I also talked about the contract, even though I didn't make a whole video for it, but the contract 
for um, Amon St. Brown in um, Detroit. Y'all remember that? I specifically um, stated that the Baltimore Ravens refused to spend anywhere close to that amount on a wide receiver. You understand where we're coming from? They didn't even like paying wide receiver $10 million a year. Much as these dudes making 30, 25, 30 mil a year, they were like, oh, no, that's not us. No bueno. <laughs> so they want to prove that, hey, we can get elite production for bottom bin prices. Let me say something right now. When it comes to the wide receiver position, the Ravens believe it's either draft, and once you draft, you graduate, and after you graduate, if you haven't done nothing, good luck, goodbye, God bless. And if that doesn't work, we might bring in an old washed-up wide receiver that hasn't had a, a top, you know, uh, wide receiving year in like two, three years, and then believe that he's going to be able to be milked. Pause. For his production at the highest level for one last year when he's as when he's with the Baltimore Ravens as you know a top guy in the offense. This is why I believe that the the that's why I believe that he's gonna be the head. I just believe it because they want to prove their point. And if anybody is saying no, it's all about Lamar, I wanted to remind you the AFC championship game. Whatever that coach is called, that's what's gonna happen. Y'all can say whatever you want about Lamar. Whatever that coach calls, that's what's going to be run. Lamar gets input, and he has some choices to audible. But what that coach calls, that's what he calls. So I just think that the coaches are going to want to show off Bateman. They're going to feature Bateman. They watch tape. They've seen there was plenty of times he was open. They want to make a concerted effort to be like, yo, not only did we draft well, we didn't have to pay the guy. And now that we're making a run at the Super Bowl, right? He's at the top line of his career. He's staying healthy and he's bottom. Like literally what he's getting paid for three years is not even one year what you guys are paying your receivers. Good luck with that. That's how the Ravens think. I just, listen, and I know some of y'all going to be like Nitro, you're overlooking that and everything else. I'm telling y'all this right now. I have a feeling, a gut feeling, Rashad Bateman leads the, the, the Baltimore Ravens in receiving yards this season. If he doesn't get, I already said this, if he doesn't get uh, right at 1,000, I believe he gets around 1,200 yards receiving this season. And then Zay might get around 1,007, 1,000, you know, 50 or something like that because he's the yak guy. He's the short, pick up the first down or pick up a quick six. And I think they're going to use him more like that. But Bateman's going to have the chunk plays. I just have that feeling he's going to have chunk plays. If you're if you're running a two tight end set, it's going to be Bateman on one side, Zay Flowers on the other. I just have the, and I just have the gut feeling that Bateman's going to make the best of his ability this year if he can stay healthy. So Lamar's number one target, maybe not in receptions, because that might well be Zay Flowers, but in total yardage and receiving yardage i think it's going to be undoubtedly rashad bateman and a lot of you are going to be able to thank john harbaugh and munkin for that because i think they're going to try to get him the ball early and often yeah that that's my yeah that's my take on rashad bateman for i just have a I had an epiphany guys and i was wondering who's going to be his number one target it might end up being bateman it really might end up being Bateman. But what do you guys think? Do you think it's going to be Mark Andrews? Do you think it's going to be Isaiah Likely? Do you think it's going to be Zay Flowers? Or do you think how I think and it end up being Rashad Bateman? Let me know what you think down in the comment section because I'm telling you this right now. After going over some things, yeah, it's looking more and more like him, right? It just is what it is. But as always, that's the episode of the Wonderkind Show. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Y'all know we get down, we have fun, and we laugh. But everything we talk about rooted in what? Facts and truth. Please do remember, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. You know I love the comments. And if you have not done so already, check out the Wonderkid Show's Patreon. Yes, three tiers of content goodness waiting for your consumption. Give it a look, give it a try. Let me know what you think. And if you would like to donate to this channel, help out with equipment and such stuff like that, bottom of the screen, QR code. QR codes to a cash app. Cash is located in the description of every video that we do. Name of it, money sign. The Wonderkin Show, super easy. But once again, this is The Wonderkin Show. This is your host, Nectar, signing off. And as always, you know my slogan. <gasps> Peace. <laughs> and I 
am out of here. Huh? Yeah! Finish him, daddy. Oh!